You want a war? You're gonna get one. Now get the guns, the drugs, from my generation, I'll take the fall. Welcome back to Reliving the War. It's the 20th of July, 1998, and Raw comes from Binghamton, New York tonight, while Nitro's in Salt Lake City, Utah. The WWF are gearing up for their fully loaded pay-per-view later in the week. We'll hear about another few matches booked for that show during tonight's episode of Raw, but let's check out Nitro's unopposed hour first of all, and see what's happening with the NWO. Scott Hall comes to the ring to talk about Kevin Nash. On Thunder this past Thursday, we saw footage from after last week's Nitro where Kevin cut a pretty heartfelt promo about his former best friend. And boy, it was heavy. Kevin said he didn't come for Scott after Slamboree this year because Scott had personal problems. He didn't address Scott's betrayal previously because Nash thought the problem would just go away and Scott would see sense, but Kevin believes Scott's being manipulated and Kev has lost his best friend. The Outsiders started the NWO, the two were supposed to make money together, but Scott's now more concerned about himself. Nash has no doubt that Hogan and Bischoff have pushed Scott over the edge. Scott's not thinking right, but it might be time for Nash to show some tough love. Scott says he's sure everyone heard the sad saga of Kev losing his buddy, but in reality, Scott was the one doing all the hard work in the ring and in this relationship. Scott's not sure how his former best friend can say he's the leader of the wolf pack when he's not even a man. He's half the man Hollywood Hogan is. Nash is an embarrassment, but the NWO black and white is just too sweet. I was hoping for a bit more, to be honest. The commentators announced that Goldberg has to give up the US title because he can't hog all the belts and leave nothing for everyone else. So tonight, DDP's gonna face Bret Hart and the winner will become the new United States Champion. Should be a good one. Stevie Ray told viewers at home that he left the TV title with Booker T tonight, but he's still gonna beat the hell out of Johnny Boone, a fantastic competitor in my books and a future Hall of Famer. The Boone dog fought valiantly with a lot of grit and determination, but it's just a shame he absolutely fucking sucked. Chavo Guerrero ends up making an appearance holding the TV title and saying that Stevie forgot his belt, so it appears Stevie was lying about giving the belt back to his brother. Stevie beats Mr. Boone with a slapjack. He chases Chavo up the ramp, but Chavo's got Pepe to make a quick getaway. Stevie walks back up the ramp with the TV title behind his back. No one saw a thing, Stevie. It's alright. Rick Steiner came out for an interview and he challenged Scott Steiner to a match at Road Wild. If Scotty's got some guts, he'll show up in Sturgis. When Scott jumped his brother with Brian Adams, he ended any hope of the Steiner brothers ever getting back together, so it sounds like we're going to get the battle of the Steiners at the next pay-per-view. Buff Bagwell then shows up and Rick says what happened to Buff last week was a travesty. Rick says he feels like it's his fault that Buff's in a wheelchair right now, but he never meant to hurt him that bad. All Rick wanted to do was win a wrestling match. Match. Bagwell says he was mad with Rick to begin with, but Buff sees things in a different way now. He appreciates the fans after all the love they've shown him over the past few weeks, so Buff forgives Rick and he tells Rick he loves him. The two hug it out, Scott Steiner then shows up and he hits Rick with a chair. Buff tells Scott to stop and then <laughs> Buff Daddy attacks Rick. It was all a big swerve, Buff Bagwell is still NWO for life. Bagwell did have tremendous fan support ever since he returned to Nitro at the Georgia Dome, but Buff Daddy's a heel through and through, and I was not mad at this at all. If I start getting swerved every week on Nitro, I might have something to say about it, though that'll never happen, right? Chris Jericho says he's been going through a lot mentally and physically thanks to Dean Malenko. Dean has attacked him, he's conspired with Arn Anderson to hurt him, Dean even talked about Chris's dead father, even though Chris's dad's alive and well, and it's all because Dean wants a shot at the cruiserweight title that's held by the paragon of virtue. So next week, Jericho will give Dino Machino a cruiserweight title shot, but this is his last chance. He'll be going back to being a fry cook at Harry's Burgers in Tampa, Florida if he can't beat the Ayatollah. That was a great call back there, by the way. 
Tony Schiavone says the Kevin Nash interview that aired on Thunder is going to air on Nitro, but Scott Hall randomly shows up and he says he's learned a lot about movies ever since hanging around Hollywood Hogan. Action movies are cool, so there's no need for WCW to show Kevin Nash in tears of endearment. The bad guy then offers Tony Schiavone a handshake and that sucker Tony fell for it. Steve McMichael took on Sick Boy next and Lodi wanted to see if Mongo would take a bump after getting hit with a sign. Steve does bump like a champ, but he did not bump for some paper. McMichael won with the Mongo spike, nobody does it better. On Thunder, Dean Malenko tried to get Arn Anderson to come back to wrestling along with Big Stevie Cole. Dean said that Chris Benoit also wants Arn to come back. Arn said he has the passion, but he just doesn't have the tools anymore. Bischoff then hosted another edition of NWO later where he ripped off Jay Leno's jokes and he also made fun of Jay Leno. It was a miserable piece of television, complete with a laugh track, sound effects and Eric cracking himself up while the crowd booed relentlessly. Seriously, this was bad and the audience made sure Eric knew it. I'm not going to cover it in detail in fear of losing subscribers. The video gets shown of Nash's emotional interview last week and the tape gets interrupted. Turns out Scott Hall stopped the video and the bad guy threw the tape in Nash's face. The outsiders then started fighting each other and what a sad sight this is. They go to the outside where the black and white and wolf pack get involved. The two factions brawl but we quickly cut back to Bret Hart interrupting the commentators and demanding that his match with DDP gets underway right this instant. Turns out DDP got jumped in the back, probably by Bret Hart, but DDP should get himself some jam, get his ass up and head to the ring for a fight right this instant. James J. Bebe Dylan tells Bret to get out of the ring. Page is going to get a little time to recover and the match isn't going to happen until later tonight. Good try though Brett, good try. Raw kicks off with a Vince McMahon promo this week while Nitro continues on with a Yuji Nagata vs Saturn match. McMahon wants to reflect upon The Undertaker's recent actions in WWF. Vince reminds fans that Taker dressed up like Kane to become number one contender, and McMahon's curious as to where Kane was two weeks ago when all this went down. How did The Undertaker get Kane's mask and ring attire? Did he lock Kane up and strip him naked? Did Taker go to Sears and ask for a Kane costume? Or is The Undertaker and Kane simply working together? Well, last week Vince tried to get some answers, and Taker told the chairman to go to hell. And then, later that night, The Undertaker was responsible for keeping the tag team titles on Kane and Mankind. Vince wants Taker to come out and clear up this mess because it's starting to get a bit annoying. The dead man doesn't need to worry about any fireworks blowing up in his face this week, so that's nice. McMahon tells The Undertaker that he's gonna have to start showing respect to the proper people if he wants to be a champion. Taker can't do it alone, The Undertaker needs Vince. Taker's actions were disrespectful last week and McMahon won't take it anymore. Taker needs to learn respect and in turn he won't be a flash in the pan champion like Stone Cold Steve Austin. In order to show that respect, Undertaker needs to answer the question, is he in cahoots with Kane? And again, we get no answer. So Taker can learn respect the hard way. The Undertaker will learn a lesson tonight courtesy of Vince McMahon. Tonight on Raw's War, the Phenom's gonna face Mankind and Kane in a two on one match. Vince then tells The Undertaker to go to hell and that was a bad move Vinnie Mac, a very bad move. Taker chokeslams the chairman, the Stooges run down and they too get taken out, but maybe tonight we'll find out if Taker and Kane are actually working together. Pat Patterson tries to help Vince down the ring steps and he ends up falling over, brilliant. Yuji Nagata and Saturn had a fun little match filled with lots of suplexes. It was very back and forth and as a matter of fact I'd like to see these two guys get a little more time on TV because they work together really well. Saturn puts Nagata down with a super kick, Sonny Ono jumps on the apron, Raven then makes an appearance and Perry gets wiped out with an even flow DDT. This gives Yuji a chance to apply the Nagata lock in Perry topside. The flock then hit the ring to attack Perry but here comes Canyon to give Saturn a hand. Canyon's on fire here and the crowd goes crazy as he delivers flatliners to Raven's boys. Kidman even takes a pile driver from the second rope that Mike Tanay seemed to really appreciate. But even after all this, Saturn hit Canyon with a death volley driver. This wasn't by mistake this time. Perry said afterwards that Canyon needs to stay out of his business. That's gratitude for you.
Triple H defends the European title next against Dilo, while over on Nitro, Sting and Nash defend their tag titles against Scott Hall in The Giant. The Nation could have picked anyone to face Hunter and they went with Dilo, not a bad selection at all. DX are going to choose someone to face The Rock a little later on, meaning the recently announced title vs title 2 out of 3 falls match at fully loaded between Rock and Triple H could be for one title, or no titles if both men lose tonight. Dilo thinks the crowd better recognise after Hunter takes a body slam, Dilo then performs a back elbow and Triple H better recognise too. Hunter comes back though as Rock watches on and even though Dilo dodges a pedigree, he ends up getting clotheslined out of the ring. China approaches Dilo and the challenger decides to take a swing at the ninth wonder of the world. That doesn't work out too well though and Triple H takes this opportunity to bring Dilo back into the ring and the champ slaps his opponent around for a bit. Dilo performs a sky high and he has to scream at the referee to begin counting. These young whippersnappers with their confusing moves, eh? DX's leader gets choked out in the corner and the rockets in a cheap shot. Dilo gets way too confident though and he ends up running straight into a hearty race knee. And when the challenger doesn't stay down for a three count, Hunter decides a few right hands are in order. The Rock laughs his ass off when he stops Triple H from performing his knee drop and China is right there to make Rock pay for his crimes. But China ended up getting distracted when Mark Henry began walking down the rampway. Triple H goes for a pedigree but Rock gets in and Hunter takes a rock bottom. Dilo covers Triple H and Dilo becomes the new European champion. At this point Triple H didn't need the belt and it made sense to move it on to someone who will actually defend it. So I thought this was a good move. On Nitro, this is only the second time Nash and Sting have teamed up since becoming tag team champions. Sting's teamed up more frequently with his buddy Lex Luger since winning the tag belts because, well, WCW I guess. But let's see if Nash and Sting can defend the belt successfully against Scott Hall in the Giant. Gotta point out the Stinger's choice of attire tonight too, an interesting choice for sure. Scott immediately tags out so he doesn't have to face Big Kev and even though the Giant starts off well, he ends up taking a big boot and Hall's forced to jump in. The crowd pops for Nash attacking Hall and the Stinger gets in on the action too. Scott wants no part of those pants the Stinger has on so he gets out of the ring to rethink his strategy. Scott gets back in, he makes fun of Sting, he then takes a clothesline and when we come back from a commercial break Scott spits on Sting before tagging in the Giant. The Giant gets slapped in the face before taking a Stinger splash but Sting's luck runs out when he tries another splash followed by a crossbody. Word of advice, don't try to crossbody a Giant. As Scott hits a fallaway slam, Tony Schiavone says Scott's wearing those Wolfpack trunks to make fun of Big Kev. I think he just didn't bring any other trunks with him to be honest. Giant helps out during an abdominal stretch but Sting gets out and he tags in Big Sexy. Hall quickly tags out but Giant has no choice but to tag his partner back in after taking a beating. The physicality between Hall and Nash is kept to a minimum though because WCW want to save this one for a later date. Hall counters Snake Eyes but he takes a big boot. The match then breaks down when Nash goes for a jackknife with Sting running in to hit a low blow on the Giant followed by a face buster. Sting gets tagged in legally, he hits a stinger splash on Hall and he goes to apply the death lock. But then Bret Hart shows up and Sting breaks the hold. Bret gets shoved out of the ring but the distraction allows Hall to hit the outsider's edge. And just like that we have new WCW Tag Team Champions, ending one of the most pointless WCW Tag Team title runs of all time. Bret's on a road tonight though, he said on Thunder he was coming after everybody while also getting pelted with eggs, so it appears the hitman's making good on his promise. It's time for Disco Dick and the Big German Bratwurst. Oh, Big Bratwurst. Disco and Alex vs Muda and Chono on Nitro, Steve Williams vs Pierre in a brawl for all contest on Raw. So Disco and Alex have an opportunity to redeem themselves after that loss to the Wolfpack last week. Looks like our boys are going to take on every NWO faction known to man and this time they're up against NWO Japan legends Masahiro Chono and the Great Muda. Chono and Muda attack early and they throw Disco out of the ring before hitting Alex with a double chop. Chono gets in a few shots in the corner but Masahiro had no idea who he was messing with. Daz Wunderkind fires back with a spinning wheel kick, he lays the boots in before gracing the audience with some Saturday 
strike favor and look at Disco go on offense as Alex tags out. Double D, dangerous Disco. He even hits Muda with a swinging neck breaker and it was all going so well. But then Muda performs a dragon screw followed by a leg lock and that's the match over. Disco gives it up and NWO Japan win. To add insult to injury, Big Scott Norton comes back after a tour of Japan and he wipes Disco and Alex out with power slams and power bombs. Our heroes never had a chance really. Someone else who never had a chance was Pierre during this Brawl for All contest with Dr. Death Steve Williams. You guys know the story, Steve was the favourite to win this thing and for good reason too. He started in Mid-South, he had legendary runs in Japan where he jumped back and forth to the United States to show how tough he really was in WCW. Steve Williams was legit too legit to quit, and the WWF were fully prepared for Dr. Death to win the Brawl for All and begin a lucrative main event run. Pierre found out the hard way that Steve was tough as nails. In round 1, Williams took Pierre down right away before getting back up and almost knocking Pierre out with punches. Williams scored another takedown and Pierre salvaged 5 points right at the end for himself with a takedown. So I scored it 15 to Williams and 5 to Pierre. In round 2, the fight should have been stopped. You can tell by Pierre's body language that he didn't want to fight anymore after taking some hard punches from Dr. Death. Williams even offered his opponent a few free shots but Pierre couldn't make the most of it. So 10 points to Dr. Death here, he also scored a takedown. In round 3, the referee thankfully gave Pierre a standing count after he walked to the corner. Twice, Pierre just stopped fighting and he tried to walk away from the fight after taking a lot of shots to the head but I still think the ref should have stopped it earlier. You end up feeling pretty bad for Pierre once this fight ends. No takedowns in round 3, just a lot of punches. 5 points go to Williams, Dr. Death wins and the favourite advances in the Brawl for All tournament. Old Chinese proverb says, a t-shirt is worth a thousand words. God damn it pal. When the Hulkster worked for the WWF, he would come into my office and try to tell me these old Chinese proverbs. I would say, Hulk, damn it, shut your stupid mouth and go out there and do the J-O-B. Of course he would complain about it for hours, and he'd cry to Brutus Beefcake like the big baby he is. But nonetheless, he would do what he was told. You can grab this t-shirt at WrestlingBios.com, featuring one of the Hulkster's most famous proverbs. And if you're not down with that, well, I got three words for you, pal. Suck my plums. During a Nitro Girls dance routine, trainer Donnie Young told Kimberly Page she needs to go backstage. It's probably connected to DDP getting attacked earlier, I would imagine. Thankfully, and coincidentally, Fire was there to take over during this two girl dance. Yeah, I've watched too much of this recently, I know all the Nitro Girls names now. Yamaguchi-san has something to say on Raw next, plus we have Skull vs Road Warrior Animal. On Nitro, Tokyo Magnum takes on Ultimo Dragon. See, if Tokyo Magnum came to the ring with Alex and Disco, then the Dream Team wouldn't have lost. Instead, Tokyo only thinks about himself having a match with Ultimo Dragon. I mean, who does he think he is? You may have noticed that WCW stacked the first half of Nitro pretty heavily this week and that means the remaining matches are all pretty short. This teacher vs student match doesn't really get a chance to start and it's a shame too because our boy Tokyo Magnum deserves all the TV time he can get. Magnum dances too much in this match and he pays for it dearly. Dragon knows his student can take a good kick in so the master shows no mercy in this matchup. The only move Magnum got in was a top rope hurricane rana. Dragon messed Tokyo up with a brain buster before applying the dragon sleeper and Tokyo gave it up. This one just wasn't long enough unfortunately. On Raw, Yamaguchi-san wants to teach his wife a lesson after eating that banana last week in Val Venus's bed. Kyoko disgraced Yamaguchi-san, she insulted her husband. So Mr. Yamaguchi's gonna punish his missus right here on Raw's war. Quality entertainment ladies and gents. You know something, I think Mrs. Yamaguchi would totally destroy Mr. Yamaguchi in a fair fight but sure. Kyoko has to get on her knees, crawl through Mr. Yamaguchi's open legs and take a paddling. She's such a bad actor that I don't know if she's scared or excited to be honest but she gets down, she's about to get smacked but Val Venus makes the save and Kai and Tai get taken out. Val sweeps Mrs. Yamaguchi off her feet, he carries her back up the ramp and they went back to Val's room to play Crash Bandicoot 2 before having an early night. 
Next up, Paul Ellering, who now calls himself Mr.com because, you know, keep up with the times and all that, brings Skull and Eight Ball to the ring. Skull's scheduled to take on Animal, but Animal comes to the ring wondering where Hawk is. Hawk should be at his partner's side because this could potentially become a 3 on 1 situation, but Hawk's nowhere to be found. The DOA launch an attack on Animal, and Ellering tries to crash his motorcycle right into Animal's little road warrior, but finally Hawk shows up to stop this attempted mutilation of his partner's genitals. Hawk's still way too late though, the match doesn't begin but the DOA are happy to leave after beating the hell out of the Legion of Doom. LOD vs DOA takes place this Sunday at Fully Loaded. Can't wait to see the LOD get beat. A refocused Steve Blackman takes on Double J and Jarrett's brought the cavalry, Tennessee Chief Inspector Lee and Southern Cyborg Robot Justice. Steve Blackman could take on all these bozos single handedly and that's exactly what he intends to do, but he goes back and brings out his protégés Ken Shamrock and Dan Severn so they can learn how to fight like real men. This will be a lesson in pure raw violence. In all seriousness, my computer blew up when I screen grabbed this and I had to buy a new one. Double J gets clotheslined out of the ring and as soon as he gets back in, he gets chopped down and kicked in the midsection. Double J then takes a power slam, we see the backbreaker from hell, and Sweet T Lee and the robot monster watch on as Blackman delivers a jumping shoulder tackle before screaming like a wild animal. He's an animal! An animal! An animal! It's announced here that Owen Hart's going to face Ken Shamrock this Sunday at Fully Loaded in a dungeon match. Severn's going to referee the bout that takes place in Stu Hart's dungeon and I for one can't wait to watch that match again. I remember being so excited to see it live back in the day. Blackman's biggest enemy is himself as always as he misses a diving headbutt while Shamrock wonders how this robot took on human form on the outside. Back in the ring though, Blackman almost gets put in a figure 4 but not today Double J, not today. Steve delivers a glorious motherfucker kick and Blackman beats Jarrett clean as a whistle on Raw's war. Owen Hart then appears and he throws Shamrock into the ring steps. Dan Severn meanwhile straightens his tie and he walks away. Speaking of walking away, Michael Cole tries to interview The Undertaker but Taker's got his bags and he's leaving the arena. The only thing the dead man would say to Cole was, I'll see you Sunday at Fully Loaded. You'd think over on Nitro that Jim Powers and Scott Norton might be a bit, just a bit competitive as Jim's a big boy too just like Norton, but old Jimbo didn't get a chance to do anything at all. Again, it's a very short match that you'd usually find at the start of Nitro and it almost feels like WCW changed the format this week with bigger matches happening at the beginning of the show and filler matches getting put on in the last hour. What you see here is really what you get. Norton destroyed Powers and although Jim tried to put Scott down with a few clothes lines, he simply couldn't make Scott budge. Norton puts Pars away with a Samoan drop followed by a power bomb. Mike Tanay says that Scott's sending a message to Kevin Nash by using the power bomb. We have got some promos next, Stone Cold on Raw and Hollywood Hogan on Nitro. Steve comes to the ring getting a brilliant ovation as always and Jim Ross wants to know Austin's thoughts on The Undertaker and this tag match coming up at Fully Loaded, but Austin says Ross has bad breath and he sends Jim back to the announce desk. Stone Cold would like to know what's up with The Undertaker because it would be nice to know if he has to whip two people's asses or three people's asses this Sunday. Either way, it doesn't matter because Stone Cold's coming to the pay per view with the intention to do damage and that's all that matters. In regards to The Undertaker disappearing tonight, Austin wonders if it's because The Undertaker doesn't want to fight Kane or if Taker left the building just to screw with Vince McMahon, because if anyone deserves to get screwed with, it's definitely Vince. McMahon then appears and he says if anyone's going to do any screwing tonight, it's going to be Vince McMahon. That's a funny way to say Alex Wright. So in the ring tonight, seeing as The Undertaker isn't here anymore, it'll be Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Mankind and Kane in the main event. Austin refuses, he says he's not a puppet, he can get in his car and drive down the same highway that The Undertaker went down so the match ain't gonna happen. Vince makes it simple, if Austin doesn't fight in the main event then Stone Cold's gonna get stripped of the championship. Austin has no choice, so Stone Cold says he'll beat Mankind and Kane's asses tonight in the ring and he's gonna do something else once he finishes the match. When I get backstage, I am gonna beat the living shit out of you and that's the bottom line. 
Hollywood Hogan puts himself over at the beginning of his promo. He says he's the almighty, he's a god. The ruler of professional wrestling. And yes, and no, I'll be a white. Wait, 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 run that back. And, me. and yes, and no, I'll be a white. And be a white. Send over, I'll be a white. Send over, I'll be a white. Send over, I'll be a white. Hogan says there's nothing but love for Scott Hall after he passed the gut check last week and Hogan congratulates Hall and the Jan for their big victory earlier on. Hogan says he admires Buff Bagwell and Scott Steiner's dedication so it seems like everyone's getting a rub tonight. Bischoff's taking over the talk show scene so he's doing alright too. Muda and Chono came to America to pay homage to the wrestling god so Hogan says thank you. Actually he says konnichiwa but never mind these finer details right Hollywood. Hogan says Bret Hart's ready, the hitman's gonna take the US title tonight on Nitro, DDP should be a man and drag himself out to the ring tonight to give Bret the fight of his life, the black and white have the tag belts, tonight they're gonna have the US title, Chono and Muda being here proves the black and white is worldwide, and the world title will get taken away from that paper champion Bill Goldberg. NWO for life brother. We've got Owen Hart vs Farouk in a Jacqueline promo on Raw, on Nitro Conan takes on Eddie Guerrero. Farouk's got himself some new ring gear tonight as he steps into the ring to face Owen Hart. Kind of incredible how they've done nothing with Farouk since he got kicked out of the nation. He delivers a backbreaker followed by a clothesline and Owen replies with a swinging neckbreaker. Owen hits an elbow drop, Farouk hits a splash, Owen fires back with neckbreaker number 2 and he then applies a Boston Crab. The crowd are chanting Nugget at Owen Hart as he plants Farouk's head into the canvas, so he sees this opportunity and he asks for a microphone. Owen tells everyone in attendance to shut up because he's not a Nugget, and this of course makes the crowd chant Nugget even more. Such a simple thing to do but it's gonna guarantee Nugget chants in every arena across America from this point forward. The fans get under Owen's skin as he ends up running straight into a power slam. The commentators put over the unpredictability of this dungeon match taking place at Fully Loaded later in the week as Farouk continues to punish the Blackheart. When Owen gets the chance to counter the crowd again chant Nugget and Owen begins losing it following a missile dropkick. Farouk delivers a spine buster but he misses a leg drop, the landing didn't look too good did it. Owen's then able to apply a sharpshooter and he wins the match via submission. But Owen forgot the golden rule, do you remember what it is? Yeah, you don't attack someone if you've got a match later in the same show. So Kenny Boy Shamrock chases Owen out of the ring but fortunately for Owen Ken Shamrock's not fast enough to catch the Blackheart. The two would run out of the arena and dash all the way to Calgary for the big dungeon match this Sunday at the pay per view. Jackie comes to the ring with Mark Merrow and she says Sable wants none of this in a bikini contest. Jackie doesn't think Sable can lose enough weight before the showdown in Fresno. Liposuction is an option of course but the surgeon could let the air out of the wrong place. Funny. So Jackie says Sable can come out and forfeit the match right now and save herself the embarrassment. Sable comes out looking very… covered up and she calls Jackie a tramp. We have got humour and class tonight in the war zone ladies and gents. Sable says her body keeps the boys up all night long, Jackie says show it and she rips her clothes off. The crowd pop when Sable tosses Jackie out of the ring and they were definitely cheering for how great Sable was at pulling off this move and nothing else. Jerry Lawler loses his pervy mind on commentary as this all goes down. The production team were too focused on watching Sable walk back up the entranceway and they totally missed Edge hitting the downward spiral on Mark Merrow. Even the replay from another camera angle didn't catch the move because every cameraman was too busy getting a shot of Sable's ass cheeks. That's what we call priorities. On Nitro, K Dog comes to the ring with Big Dog Antoine Carr of the Utah Jazz. Carl Malone must have told his teammates that WCW was handing out free money. He helps out with Conan's usual promo and Eddie's heard enough. Latino Heat lays the boots in before putting Conan down with a clothesline followed by a European uppercut. Conan replies by trying to throw Eddie up to the rafters and the audience absolutely love this move right here. 
Guerrero then gets press slammed and he finds himself on the outside where he has a run in with the big dog. Luckily for Mr. Carr, Eddie doesn't get physical. Back in the ring though, Eddie takes a monkey flip and even after poking Conan in the eye, Eddie struggled to maintain any kind of advantage. K-Dog delivers a sit down face buster, he nails Eddie with his signature rolling clothesline, but then Sea dog makes an appearance along with Pepe. Conan gets distracted as Chavo Guerrero approaches the ring and it looks like Eddie gets a chuckle out of his nephew's antics. But things get serious when Eddie takes Pepe away and the referee throws the match out seeing as there's a live horse in the ring. Conan ends up taking Pepe away and Eddie gets whacked, Guerrero then gets thrown out of the ring, Chavo has a little fun at his uncle's expense and Nitro moves on to its next match. HBK is back on Raw and he's going to provide commentary for the final two matches of the night. Maybe he sucked so hard last week that the WWF wanted to limit his airtime. We then see clips from a Brawl for All match that wasn't part of the Raw broadcast. 8-Ball vs. Ah, oh, serious? 2 Cold Scorpio? Man, they've robbed me from the opportunity to play 2 Cold Scorpio's intro. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm playing it. I don't care. We got a slugfest in round 1 and look at 8-Ball, you'd think Scorpio was doomed after seeing this but Scorpio ended up winning the whole fight, round 2 was more grapple based with Scorpio winning the most takedowns and in round 3 8-Ball tired himself out and Scorpio landed more punches. It's gonna be X-Pac who faces The Rock for the IC title next and Rock says he's still leaving Raw tonight as the IC champion. So we've got The Rock vs X-Pac on Raw's war while over on Nitro we've got Kurt Hennig vs Lex Luger, their fourth match on WCW Nitro. There's a big old DX vs Nation brawl at the beginning of the IC title match but we're missing someone. Road Dog apparently showed up to Raw sick and he got sent home so get well soon Road Dog. Brett, zip it for just one week. DX and the nation head back up the ramp but China forgot she had to stay at ringside. You can see X-Pac saying he's waiting on China and eventually he has to go back up the ramp to retrieve her. The two think it's funny. Kid almost landed on Rocky's head following a hip toss and he went for that standing bronco buster again that will never make any sense to me at all. Rock chokes X-Pac on the ropes and the kid takes a fantastic stun gun bump at the other side of the ring but he stays in the match after kicking out at 2. The two have a brief scuffle on the outside with Rock maintaining control and back in the ring Rock shows X-Pac who's boss with a chin lock. Samoan drop from the Rock, swinging neckbreaker from the Rock. The Great One teases us big time with chin lock number 2 but X-Pac finally does something significant when he hits Rocky with an axe factor. Pac keeps the pressure on by delivering a bronco buster. He then throws Rock out of the ring before distracting the referee and as Rock gets back in China hits the champ with his own title belt. The Rock's tough as nails though and he kicks out at 2. The match comes to an end after the referee takes a bump and Delo shows up along with Triple H. Hunter stops Delo from performing a lowdown and Rock ends up taking a pedigree. The referee wakes up but a second referee comes out and he says Triple H interfered so the title isn't gonna change hands. China attacks the second referee, we get another DX vs Nation brawl and Rock walks away looking pretty happy with how this whole thing turned out. Triple H meanwhile was happy that this lady got her bops out for all to see. This guy loved it too, so did this guy, and this guy, and this guy. On Nitro, Lex Luger took a loss to Kurt Hennig. Ravishing Rick Rude ended up being the difference maker when he got in the ring to assist his best friend. The match went exactly how you'd expect. Kurt controls most of the bout thanks to underhanded tactics. Lex makes a heroic comeback filled with atomic drops and clotheslines, but a referee bump allowed Ravishing Rick to get in the ring and try to do some damage. Unfortunately for Rick, he ended up in a torture rack, but this allowed Kurt to hit Lex and deliver a perfect plex. Rick Rude holds Lex's foot down, and Kurt Hennig wins wins via pinfall. Nothing special at all, we have seen it all before. We end this week's episode with Bret Hart vs DDP for the US title and Steve Austin taking on Kane and Mankind. So the hitman gets in the ring and he's looking pretty confident about his chances tonight. DDP gets introduced by Michael Buffer but it takes him a very long time to show up. And my my my, our guy isn't looking too good is he? Looks like Dallas needs to go home and feel the bong because he really shouldn't be wrestling in this horrible state. But he's gonna fight like a real man and he's gonna try to win that US championship. 
Brett looks like he's having fun as he goes on the attack and Dallas hits the mat right away. The hitman targets the ribs and midsection in between the odd whack to the head and it's looking very unlikely that DDP is gonna win this thing. He swings, he misses, he takes a Russian leg sweep followed by a leg drop, Brett applies the sharpshooter and Dallas makes it to the ropes. So the hitman sinks a boot into DDP's skull and that's all she wrote. Brett applies the sharpshooter once again and Dallas gives it up. Mark Curtis gives us some finger gun action but Brett can't hear them. His excellency is too busy making Paige suffer. A stretcher comes out to take DDP away while the NWO comes out to celebrate with Brett. A very strong night for NWO Hollywood indeed with the black and white winning both the WCW tag team titles and the US title. Over on Raw, Mankind tries to attack Stone Cold before Austin gets in the ring but the rattlesnake smacks Foley with the WWF title. Stone Cold throws punches at both his opponents but it takes no time at all for Kane and Mankind to take control. Vince McMahon absolutely loves it backstage. Austin and Kane end up on the outside and Stone Cold tries to incapacitate the big red machine so he can focus on Mankind. He tries to quickly pin Foley after hitting a clothesline but Mick kicks out of two and he then applies the mandible claw. On the outside, Foley tries to apply it again and he ends up getting his head smashed on the ring post, but this isn't enough to keep Foley out of the match. Austin hits a Lufez press on Kane but Mankind pulls Stone Cold out of the ring and we get a brawl beside the announce table. When it gets back inside the ropes, the heels take control and this leads to Undertaker showing up holding a chair. Turns out the dead man didn't head home after all. Taker stands in Austin's corner and he watches on as Austin fights Foley. Paul Bearer attacks Austin with his smelly shoe and Mankind uses a chair on Stone Cold, but the Undertaker doesn't seem too eager to help Austin. Finally, Stone Cold's able to hit Foley with a stunner but Kane comes in to break the pin. Austin then brings Kane to his corner following a few low blows and the Undertaker ends up hitting his younger brother with a chair, though Taker could have been aiming for Stone Cold. The plot thickens, ladies and gents, or rather, it stays the exact same and we still don't know what side Taker's on here. The referee disqualifies Austin for some reason. All those other chair shots earlier in the match were perfectly fine. Hi. Wait a minute! Oh. Oh. And just in case, there's one for the Undertaker! We have seen better shows from both companies to be honest. You begin Nitro looking forward to Brett vs DDP but you can hardly even call that main event a wrestling match. And the overall format of Nitro this week felt experimental with the bigger and longer matches happening earlier in the show. Seems like this was a tactic to draw in viewers or stop people switching to Raw but it made Nitro feel a bit messy. The WWF meanwhile didn't really progress their main storyline but I think that negative stands out more because they've been doing such a good job in the weeks prior. All in all though, Raw did have better matches with Dilo vs Triple H and Rock vs X-Pac standing out the most, so I'll give a point to Raw this week. In total, Raw has 68 points, Nitro has 59 and we have still got 16 ties. In the TV ratings, Raw won with a massive 5.0, Nitro didn't do too bad either with a 4.7. Fully Loaded's up next on the channel so please join me later in the week and we'll see what happens in the big main event tag team match. We've also got the IC title 2 out of 3 fall showdown to look forward to and we'll go to the dungeon in Calgary to see Owen Hart battle Ken Shamrock. I hope you enjoyed yet another episode of Reliving the War, thank you so so much for watching and please take care.